Hello you guys and welcome back to Dawn and Dawn and Nisi. I'm so glad you came to watch me. Hit subscribe so you can see me. And then thumbs up if you like me. Alright you guys, today I am back with a video. I took a couple of days off before we get started. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. And see what I'm eating and see what I'm talking about when I make my videos. Um, today on the menu, I have, you can see I have some string beans. I have some white rice. These are actually ribeye steaks that they were in the freezer. And I said, let me cook these. And I put them in a the crock pot. They fell apart and they taste so good. Well, they look like they taste so good. I haven't really tasted it yet, but... You can't go wrong with a ribeye steak. I have a biscuit. I have, of course, my cucumbers. I put them in a nice little glass for you today. I got honey to put on my biscuits. And I cook my screen beans with some um, sweet chili sauce. It's just Walmart brand sweet chili sauce. I know I like to get the Frank's sweet chili sauce, but I just got the Walmart this time. And drinking today. We have water in my mom glass. And mom, it says it backwards and forwards. Just water, it's very refreshing. I don't drink enough water for you guys. I know I don't. So, I'm ready to eat. Today, mm, yeah, it's good. Very, very good. I just, I marinated it in the, um, what did I marinate? I marinated in steak, steak marinade, and I was going to the Friday. Didn't work out. So I ended up just throwing it in the crock pot because I was still busy Saturday, but I wanted to go ahead and get it cooked because it had already been sitting in the marinade. So I just threw it in the crock pot because I still had to go back out. And this is good. Throw them in the crock pot with some onions and some um, Lipton soup mix. Seasoned up a little bit more. It's good. My string beans are just frozen string beans in the bag. And when I cooked them, I cooked them, I cooked it with this stuff. Mm, that's so good. I need to eat a little bit first. Because I am going to talk to you all today. I got story time for y'all. I'm going to talk to you all about. <coughs> I'm going to bite. Watch your hands up. Oh, my arm's flapping in the wind. <coughs> okay, well. Let me talk to you guys about my ex-boyfriend, past relationship. Um, it's not really a good story. It's not a good story. It was a bad, it ended badly. It ended very badly. Which is part of the reason why I'm single now. Mm. Show me the script. I put butter on my biscuit because I love butter, which is not good. It's not good, but I got it. Let's see what we get. Honey, honey. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, well. I think this was 2013 or 2014. You can't even see my face. Hold on, let me try to move it. That's a little better. All right. 2013, 2014. I don't even really remember. But I had went to a, a function with some family members. 
And, you know, they were older than me. So I figured I'd just go. Just to get out the house. Be a bunch of 50, 60 year olds. It was old head party. And I ain't, I ain't young myself, so you know if I say it's an old head party, it's an old head party. So I just went to support, by his head, to support. And while I was there, you know, I'm talking to my cousins. I'm like, maybe I can find me a sugar daddy. But lo and behold, I met the youngest guy in there. He was younger than me. And I was, I was so shocked. I was surprised. I think he was 31. Had been 31 at the time. And I was, how old was I? I think I was 39. So, they need something up on there. I hope there's some salt in here. I'm gonna pick salt. So man, he was so handsome. He was, you know, I like I like him dark. If anybody know me, the darker the better. I don't want to see you at nighttime. I want you dark. He was dark. Pretty eyes, the prettiest teeth, pretty smile, long dreads, muscles. Woo! He was something I just couldn't believe. You, you want to talk to me? Ain't that one? So we we talked for a while that night. We exchanged numbers. He walked into my car and stuff. And later on that night. <coughs> He texts me. And I don't know if, um, you know, nowadays it's bad. I don't like it at all. Meeting people and stuff. He texts me. And all I kept saying was, ooh, I hope it ain't no, um, no inappropriate photo. Because that's what people send it at. You meet somebody next day, you know, they think you want to see their private. I don't want to see your shit. But he just takes me a nice picture of herself, face shot. He's very handsome. Oh, he so cute. So we um we just talk on the phone for a little while. I think the first time we went out, we went to I think his sister had a birthday party or something. And we went there. He had to pick me up. He didn't have no. <coughs> Didn't have a have a nice car. I had a a pickup truck, a little pickup truck, a little raggedy pickup truck. But it was his. We had a good time that night, and he didn't, he didn't smoke weed. I smoked weed then, but he didn't. And when I wanted weed, he would buy me the weed, and when I wanted see, whatever I wanted, he would get for me. He was so sweet, so nice. Then, you know, he came over after the party, we just sat up and talked, we didn't do anything. Oh, wow, this is great. So then when we finally did, do to do That was fantastic as well. Fantastic. So we dated, you know, we were we were together and eventually he moved in. I was quick. He was quick. It had to been about two or three months. He moved in. Uh, at the time I wasn't really working. Oh, <coughs> I was working a temp job, and temp job ended. <coughs> temp job ended. I, you know, I saved 
a little money because you know if you ain't really working you can't really just because you got a job don't mean you just spend everything you got to save it because you don't know if you're gonna have a job right after that one in oh, he came he was he was working at a restaurant but he still he, he made tips he had good money so now, since I was off work, well, he wasn't working, we'd be down, I'd be looking for a job, so I helped him look for a job. And when you have somebody with a resume, you get to see the type of stuff that they did, what type of person they are. I'm like, wow, he's talented, he did this for so long and this for so long. So it ended up, he um, ended up getting a a job at an apartment complex paying paying them like $18 an hour. When he got that job, it was fine. I didn't have to do anything. He took care of everything and I have never had that before in my life where I might come home from work and then just hand you $800. Come home from work and just hand you some money. Just hand you money. I never had that before. And we hadn't even been together that long. I'm like, wow, he's, he's a good guy. But everything goes south eventually. Goes south eventually. He was on probation. And he never would really explain why he was on probation. He would say this, that, and, and and it didn't go no more. It's getting expunged off my record, and I just gotta go take do this and do that, and then I'm done. <coughs> so I would see. You know, he didn't smoke weed, but I always seen, you know, the inside of blunts in his truck. Didn't think nothing of it. So he kept working, working. He ended up, he got him a new truck. I mean, a brand new truck, but he got him a nice new truck. It was really nice. He had to make payments. I kind of got upset because he didn't give me no money that time when he got paid because he used it for the um, down payment. But... I'm not trying to be spoiled. You need your own vehicle. You need a, a vehicle that runs good because the, the truck was old and he always had to do work on it. So around that time, I had started, the school girl started, so I was teaching. I was, you know, serving. So I worked. I could work when I wanted to work. So that around that time, I don't know what happened. I wasn't at home all the time. He started, when well, he went his home as often as he started doing extra stuff. I don't know what he was doing. I really didn't care. I'm not, I'm not that jealous type of person. I'm not really jealous. Because at the end of the day, no matter what you do, you come back to me. So that's why I really didn't trip off of that. And... So I'm not coming home, then what happened? What happened then? Oh, driving to work. Cause my car was down, he was dropping me off at work when he was going on to work. But we believe he was always super late, leave late. So, as usual, I got to work. And just in, in, at the time he's supposed to be clocking in, and he's just speed, 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 speed. So he called me while I was at work. Come out. And I pulled over speeding. He didn't lock up. I guess he had a, a, a warrant or something. No, oh, because he didn't go see his probation office. So 
Sweet, I like that. I'm like, man. I mean, I had to catch the bus on it. But it was all right. We got locked up. We was locked up for about two weeks. He got out of jail. And he like never came back. Never came back. Then call, he called to ask me what's his ID. To get his ID or something, he needs to cash his check or do something. The same day he got locked up. He came by and got the ID. I said, I'll be right back. And he ain't never come back. Never came back. Come to find out. I know, he was seeing somebody else all along. And this person, even though he was only locked up two weeks, he had been writing them letters and everything. Oh, okay. So, about a month passed, he came back with his dad to get all this stuff, because he had clothes, he had tools, he had all kinds of stuff over there. They came and picked it up, and gave me a hug, and that was it. But then... Then, I think two or three months passed, and we ended up getting back to that. But something was a little off. When he, he had managed to keep his job, and which I, I didn't know. No, wait, let me tell you this. While we was broke up after he left and everything, I didn't know that he had to go to the um, halfway house. And he had, you know, certain hours, but I still wouldn't see him. And it was like one day, he knew I, I had to get my car fixed and all kinds of stuff. He just popped up one morning and gave me some money. And then I never seen him again. About two weeks after that, you know, he started showing up, telling me, oh, I had to go to the halfway house, and blah, blah, blah. It was Christmas time, and he had to be in there for Christmas and all this other stuff, which, I'll listen to your story. Because I was still really hurt, because everything was going fine, and you just left. He was cheating on me the whole time. So I was hurt, then I was happy that he wanted to come back. What a fool I was. So, we got back together, the girl was, the other girl, she was still, he was still seeing her, he had lost his job at the um, apartment, I think, when he worked, he worked at Home Depot, and he always kept a job, he knew he needed some money, and then he did the restaurant part time, so he would always have enough to take care of what he needed to take care of. However, he wasn't giving me no money. The girl was calling me back and forth. She wanted him, so evidently she thought he was giving me money. That's why she wasn't getting no more. That wasn't the case. So I kept asking, what is, what is you doing with your money? What is going on? I was to find out it's on drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I try not to judge nobody because I know a lot of people, people do drugs. And people are functioning alcoholics, functioning drug addicts. If you can take her out of your business and then you, whatever you got left to feed your habit, that's okay. That means you take care of business. Mm -hmm. That's what you like to do. Cigarettes is a habit. It's a drug habit. It's just not illegal. Man, I ate all. Oh, it was really good. 
I ate it all, y'all. Mm. I feel like I can eat some more. I was trying to find out he was on drugs. So he said, I want you to go to the, um, to the classes with me. Go to the classes with me. So we was going on to, going up to the um, CA meetings, AA meetings, going to all the meetings. And then eventually, I'm like, how you gonna, how you gonna drink a beer before you go to an AA meeting? What kind of mess is that? I ain't enough for the beer. Oh, okay. So we thought that, I thought things was changing. They wouldn't. They did not change. Look at that child. That plate is clean. It's clean. That was a lot of food. Mm. I wasn't getting no better. See what happened next. Well, it was a it was a lot that we went through. At the meetings, he you know he he was so insecure, so jealous, and I don't know why, cause he wasn't like that at first. I guess because he had the other woman. But I guess when he didn't have it no more, he, had, he put all this, focus all this energy on me. He would go do work on different houses, but he would, you know, he would paint, put up that wall, he put on the whole roof. He did, he was very handy, very smart. But he, I would have to go with him. I don't want to go with you and sit in your truck while you do this. You're going to be here six hours. You want me to sit here while you drive all this whole house. But he didn't want me to be at home. So when I would stay at home, I didn't even know it. This nigga was recording me. Turn the tablet on record so he could hear everything that happens in the house. And he would call. He want me to put on a video call so he could see everything. He didn't want to see me. He want me to turn the phone the other way so he could see all right, go in the kitchen. Go by the back door. The back door locked. Somebody just came in the back door. So I stopped answering the phone. Next thing you know, after he called me two or three times, I don't answer the phone. He had to know. I didn't answer the phone. I didn't You done left your job making money so you can come see who at this house and ain't nobody here. He just really, 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 really jealous. Um, and the last straw was, mm, I don't know huh? The last straw was a holiday, Fourth of July. He was going with his family because he had his kids with him, and we, and I was going to my family. We was gonna meet up later. I said, when you get done with your um, with your dad, cause I didn't want to stand over there drinking with them. I didn't want to do that. You can come over to my house. You mean come over to you know where I'm at? You know where we at? Come on over. There. So I think I was at my aunt's house about maybe an hour or so. You know he called in eight five minutes, and then he finally said, okay, I'm on my way. So he came. He looked at you know it's a family get together at a house so my cousins are outside everybody's outside some people in the front some people on the side and he's looking at if i ain't never met these people all these people all these men over here to see you who is this man i ain't never seen him before why is he over here i don't know somebody bald i don't know so he was just really really being ignorant um so we, we Everybody was leaving my aunt's house and was going to another family member's house to do fireworks. And he was in his car. I was in my car. He had his kids. My kids had left with other family members. Because, you know, kids can't wait to get away from their parents when they had the, the function. And see, their cousins, they out of there. So they left. So I'm driving to my car. I'm like, okay, just follow me over here. I didn't say, no, nah, you can't go with my boyfriend here. I said, follow me over here because that's all I was doing. I'm too old to be playing games. So I'm driving, driving through the little subdivision because it was only about a 10-minute drive to get to the other house. 
I tell you, he hit me in the back of my car. My car um, ran off the road. He jumps in my car. You know, now his kids in his car. His kids, a teenager and two young kids, like seven and twelve or something. And he hits me. He jumps in, takes off, and he hops on the highway. We just fight, fight, fight all the way, and we end up in. Greenville, Illinois. I'm in St. Louis. I, I don't know how far we drove, but it was too long. And we steady fighting along the way. Um, after he finally stopped and pulled over, I gave him, you know, he was drunk. He was drunk, he was high, he was something. So he ate all the food that I had took from my aunt's house. You know, you take the plate home. He ate all that, and I guess he calmed himself down. And we drove home. Whew. So we get in the house. He pulls out his phone. He's going to these um, porn websites. Oh, you about to do this. You about, you about to do this, that, and the other. And it really wasn't nothing I could say without having having a fight. And this, you know, I said he got most. He's a strong man, so he hold me down. And it's not a good. It's not a good experience. And I was trapped in my own house as like a sex slave for three days. He finally, he left. He finally left. His food stamp card came. My <laughs> food stamps came or something. He went to the store. All these was down the street. A five minute walk. And he got in the truck, so I figured he was going somewhere else anyway. I got in my car and I left. I went right over to my stepmother's house. No, wait a minute. First, I was scared. Like, he gonna, he gonna try to run me off the road if I leave. So I called my, my brother over. And my brother stayed there while I, I grabbed a few things, just threw them in the laundry basket and threw them in the car and left. I went to my stepmother's house. I told my stepmother, told my brother, my baby brother, this. he's, you don't wanna mess with him. And I told him about it and they got ready. It was like they was preparing for the war. They got they they supplies ready. We going down to this house. We gonna get all this nigga stuff out of. We got all this stuff out of my house. Threw it in the back of that old truck that was in the backyard. My stepmama called him. Told him we better not see him no more. And that was it. I haven't seen him since then, and I've been happy. I only been I thought about him because um, I had I had a. Um, Fire him. and because he was a mechanic or whatever, he, was, he took my gun. I didn't know that he took it and was outside working on a car with it because he, you know, we didn't live in the best neighborhood. So he had it outside, and I guess he put it in the truck and forgot it was in there. And he was driving to work and got pulled over. And he searched the truck and there's my gun. So I'm trying to figure out how can I get my firearm back. So. I was checking on on the website to see if the case was over so that I could get it back. And I look, I said, oh, he got a new charge. Let me see what it is, just being nosy. And I look at it, and it's for kidnapping, it's for rape, it's for domestic assault. I'm like, man, this is just what he do. I thought that he was just out of his mind high or something and did this to me. But this is evidently what he does. And it just, it just brought back some memories for me to you know, like, man, he did somebody else the same way that he did me, you know? And because of that, I, don't, I haven't really been, I haven't been with a man because I don't, once you do something unwillingly, when you don't want to do it unwillingly, once you've been raped by someone you loved or you thought you loved or you thought loved you, you don't really want to get back in that scenario. So that's kind of why I'm single, but it's been... Um, a little over two years now since all that happened and I won't be rushing into nothing else no time soon but there was my story time it wasn't, it wasn't a good story but it's a story to maybe let some of you ladies know that if you see some signs some red flags don't look past them they're there for a reason they let you know all along that something is wrong with these people. So, 
We got a clean plate special. Nothing's left. Let me drink up my water so everything can be done. I need to get a burp out for Jaleel. He always watching. Let me get a burp out for you. Uh, that was a little burp. But until next time, see you later, my darlings. <laughs>